All right, so ambulance here. We have made it. For whatever reason, it's still pulling to the left pretty good. I don't know why it's pulling to the left. Yeah, I don't know why it's pulling to the left, but it's pulling to the left. I don't know. But other than that, it's driving just fine. We are actually in Bonneville Salt Flats, the little starting area. It's five miles that way to the actual salt flats where we're going to go. But I'm going to tell you guys something. If you guys go to Google Earth, look, go to West Windover, and you go to the Bonneville Salt Flats, you'll see this Y here. If you follow the Y up and go up to the camping there, zoom in, see if you guys can see my bus in Google Earth. It was there the last time I looked. I was camped with an RV. Can't miss it. It has the four solar panels on the top and the roof deck. And to the southeast of it, they're actually testing what looks to be a airplane there parked next to it. And they're actually testing a firefighter drone when I was here last year. And uh, that's the mountain I got stuck on. But uh, let's get to Bonneville Salt Flat. Awesome, right? Oh, and I can do 80. I can drive 80 miles an hour now. And it's legal to drive 80 miles an hour. It is awesome, and I have AC, and it's just cruise control. It's like night and day difference, this moving up 20 years. So, that's will probably be for sale soon. Alright, let's get on down the road. So we made it to the Bonneville Salt Flats. This is actually Aaron's thing. It's my thing too. I was actually here last year, and... If you look over there, there used to be a sign where those two posts were sticking out. And it was like this really thick, heavy-duty steel sign, like half inch where people shot it through it and everything else. Looks like they replaced it with that little flimsy thing there. I will cut in some shots of that uh, sign here. Okay. Can you guys see it? You see it's only like ankle deep. Maybe shin deep. Wow, that's clear. I don't think I've seen water this clear in a while. Look at the salt crystals here. And rocks. Salt crystals. And look how it's raised up right here. You can kind of see the texture. That is really cool. Glittery. Shiny. That's just really cool. I wonder if you guys can see it without... Yeah, you guys can see it. You can see the uh, depth there. And how you just walk out and... Man, I'm tempted to go in there. Barefooted. Okay, what's this say? Um, International Speedway. There's locks here. I don't know why there's locks here. Bureau of Land Management. I'm going to take a photo of this, however... I think this might be steel. It is steel. Look here, all the bullet holes in here where people have shot this. The steel plate. It wanted to last a while, but we probably didn't figure on people coming in and shooting crap up. I wonder if they, sh well, they shot this side. Some of them have been shot from the other side. A little thing there. I'll put a photo on here in just a second. And all these stickers. Oh wow, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, what do you guys think of the new rig? So last year when I was here, there was actually water up to about shin deep. They said do not go out on it because it might uh, fall in a sinkhole and I have a great fear of sinkholes. Needless to say, I never came out here. So this is all, this is kind of like a giant peninsula surrounded by water. Hmm, look at this. This is part of the salt. Real salt, like giant salt crystals that I just dropped in my microphone. Like huge, giant salt crystals everywhere. Oh man, oh man. Sun setting behind the mountain there. That's an ancient volcano there. It's where I got my motorcycle stuck on the side of it. It was funny. I, I kept going up and up the hill. 
I thought, man, my motorcycle's lacking a lot of power. I'm going to have to check it out. I'll do it once I get to the top of the hill. I get to the top of the hill and look back, and I have no road behind me. It's because I was going up such a steep grade, and it kind of topped off the top. The road just disappeared. So much so that to go back down it, I was like, oh, crap. I'm a little freaked out here. What do I do? There's no one to rescue me here. Art knows where I am, but he ain't going to come up here. Um, so... I said, okay, I'm going to start the bike up, pull in the clutch, slam the brake down, and I rode the brake down the whole way and controlling the speed with the front brake. There's a skid mark like 200 feet down the side of the steepest part of that mountain where I went up. Oh, look at that. You can see the light rays coming in out of these things. Absolutely beautiful. Alright, so we stayed last night at the Bonneville uh, Salt uh, Flats. We actually came up to the BLM and found a spot where we was a little ways off the road. We was actually way too close to the road. Stars last night was excellent. Apparently there's people camping out here to see the comet. Um, whatever comet that it was. I didn't know anything about it because I've been busy in my own life so, for a while. So mainly dealing with this. Um, as you can see there's still a, a thing in the middle of the floor. I had to sleep kind of on the cardboard on that thing last night. We're gonna, we got a cordless uh, Ryobi Sawzall to cut it off. And we're going to do it, but I can't seem to get the inverter working, which means I'm going to have to figure out some other method of charging it. Maybe we'll just use a, get a 12-volt plug-in inverter enough to charge the Ryobi stuff off the vehicle as we're going down the road, and we can get that going. Um, yeah, so this is the inside of the ambulance. We've been kind of living in it. The... Pine is for the composting bucket toilet thing going on right now. Uh, being that I don't have any power uh, on the batteries and they need to be charged at least one time, uh, we haven't had a chance to build a composting toilet in all truth, so it's just a bucket that we throw pine soft bedding in it, and it seems to work quite well. We're going to dump it when we dump our trash, probably to the next spot. Let's see. Oh, God, it's bright out here. So bright. It. Take a quick look around. We've had the doors open all night to stay cool. Uh, it's bright out here. Let's do a quick walk around. Darn bugs. So I would definitely recommend coming out to the Bonneville Salt Flats if you ever get out this way. It's definitely worth it. Figured out the lights on the top. I'm going to leave them unhooked for now. I was trying to get the inverter working. It's in another compartment somewhere i got to fix. And lots of vents everywhere on this. That'll be fun. Yeah, that's a quick walk around. The campions or ambulance. I haven't really figured out the name of it yet. I'm thinking for the stars will be the name of it, but I'm not quite, quite sure. We'll figure it out. It depends on what I do decide to do with the build out. There's one thing I've been kind of wrapping on my around with my head since the bus build out that I haven't quite got figured out. I was toying with the idea of making the uh, bedroom area clamshell open so I can stargaze from the bedroom and not build a deck on the roof, kind of thing. It, it brings in a lot more allergens into everything, but it still makes it a little bit better. I'm going to close this real quick. Loud noise. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I like having the doors here. But the new plan probably won't have near as much door for them. Which is fine. But I see why a lot of people just take it and turn it into a perfectly good working ve vehicle. Because there's a lot of space in it. Actually, that's deeper than that. 
So there's a space behind that that's not being used. I don't know, there's lots of like little unused cubby holes in this thing. It was like six inches behind that that's not even in use. As much storage as there is in here, there's still a lot of wasted space. It's warm in here, and, and this window doesn't open. Neither does the back one. The side one by the door opens. Slightly with the screen, but yeah, there's lots of space in here. This, if I do it just right, this thing will seem huge for the size that it is. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how high I want to go with the roof raise. The original plan was to build a false floor in it and put all my batteries and everything in the false floor and leave the external cabinets for other stuff that I may want to do, but I may end up putting the stuff in that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, whenever we get it back after this, we're going to strip it all out, I'm pretty sure. And I'm taking note of some things like... These shelves look huge here. They're only about maybe six to eight inches wide, but they make it look huge in here in a big open space. So I'm gonna see if I can maintain the giant feeling that I get in here, especially with the roof rays, it'll help with that. But still remain functional and wonderful. The other thing is I was thinking about dropping a dinette on the back of it with a big viewing window. I may not bring the motorcycle out. I may get an e-bike to bring out and skip the motorcycle thing. Haven't decided. We'll see from there. But uh, yeah, inside the ambulance. You guys have a good day. We're going to head back to Salt Lake City and go up to... What island is it, Aaron? Antelope Island by Badger Bay. Antelope Island by Badger Bay. And check that out. They have a 6,000-year-old six, 6, herd of buffalo. 600-year-old herd, herd of buffalo there. Which is interesting itself. Um, and then we're going to go north and see if we can catch up with those friends I was talking about. Say hi to them probably for an evening or a night and then head on down to Colorado and visit friends there. And people there. So, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm trying to figure out all the switches and everything. Oh hey, check this out. This is... This is the electrical here, and this is really cool because all the control wires come in here, goes through a self-setting reset with the actual, well not self-setting, but actual reset with a button, then through a relay and then back out. I might reuse that, actually I probably will reuse it um, after I strip it all off, amble ends and other stuff, but uh, the, and there's a reason people move straight into these things after they buy them. They are really well set up with very little change to it. You could be living out of it just as it is, but I like standing up in my space. And I really would like to have a working shower in here, even though I could probably go into a station. I want to have a tub shower combo in here. And I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to manage to do this. If I do manage to do it, it's either going to be a tub that slides out from some compartment somewhere, or it's going to be a really tiny, like, curl up in a ball and soak like Japanese soaking tub which is fine because you'll soak it the soaking effect you just won't get to stretch out and I think a toilet's going to go over here that way I can empty the compost from the outside and never have to come in inside it'll, it'll be handy and we'll go from there kind of how we want um my original plan is build out a whole bed area above the cab area. I'll probably create a space there and fill it with something. That way I can disconnect it from the cab relatively easily. And if I want another vehicle, should I want? Although, I can't see actually needing to do it here because of it is a 7.3 liter uh, Ford Power Stroke, which is highly desirable because of reliability. Um... Kitchen area is going to be just this side. I haven't quite figured out where my laundry is going. I'm thinking of overlapping it in the shower space with everything else. Just make the shower stall slide out, but have the clothes hanging above it kind of thing with the tub. Um, that's kind of where I'm thinking with that. That way I can have a decent closet space. The only biggest thing is mixing moisture in there. I have to have the tub clean and dry before I put it back. I want, I wanted 100 gallons, but I don't know if I have the weight savings to do it. The 
Ambulance base weight is about 9,050 um, pounds or something like that. It's less than 10,000 pounds. But this uses a laminated plywood in here all throughout. So I imagine there's weight here and there's a lot of metal weight I'm going to be cutting out of it whenever I take all the... Uh, some of the, well not all of them, but some of the storage cabinets out, so I'll be taking weight there. But whenever I get it emptied out, I'm going to take it in to the scale and get it weighed too. So probably I'll find a truck stop to do an official weight kind of as it is with all our stuff in it. It's not too far off, then I'll do a, a stripped out weight, and then whenever I'm complete, I'll do a full weight. Um, just to make sure I'm kind of within spec. I might do some as I'm building out to just to change the design slightly. But that would be fun. Getting in here. Um, yeah, and the uh, lights in here are incandescent, so they don't do very efficient lighting. So that's the other thing. Um, this I pulled down to clean because I was going to hang a curtain there for the kind of semi permanent bathroom. Not permanent bathroom, but semi permanent bathroom. Anyhow, and yeah, this would be a good just move in, make it work thing, but it's still hot in the summer in here, even with all the doors open, so it needs more insulation. And if you guys want to see my ideas for that, you guys are just going to have to watch. So, see you guys. Sorry, I'm a little tired. I didn't sleep good because I slept on that uh, ambulance things last night with a lean. The stars were great, though. And there's also a lot of traffic here. It's gorgeous here. Definitely a place to come and check out, just to see it.